<laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another spooky, scary Halloween episode. Furbis, beware, you're in for a scare, because my name's James. I'm Nicole. And this is Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. This Halloween will make the ranger scream with my favorite pumpkin MC. <laughs> like I said, my name is James. However, it's Halloween and bring bing. Oh, wait, how do those go? There's that song by like the Rockettes or something. Ding, ding, a ding, 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 a ding. Wedding bells are yeah, in the air. Yeah, it's definitely not Christmas at all. Because I'm Marshland Munster. I married Grandpa Munster and took his name as it holds more weight in showbiz. Okay. I'm a husband now. <laughs> How do you feel about that, my queen? My, the bricks. I guess Emissary of Hell still works for a spooky time. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you want a different name? I can come up with one. I don't care. Nagool. Nagooli. Got it. Oh, my God. If you were that cat ghoulie and you were voiced by Richard Kind... Yeah. Think of that, listeners, if Richard Kind's voice was always coming out of Nicole's mouth. Your boner would hit the ceiling. <laughs> I'd go, va 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 because that's yeah. ghoulies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be dried up like in Scary Movie 2. Scary mm. Movie 1? No, it's got to be 2. Uh-oh, dropped my pen. Nicole, <laughs> yes. it's the scariest of holidays. Yeah. Tax season. I'm kidding, guys. It's Hallow's Eve, Samhain, as Wiccans would say. Nicole, are you scared? No. Okay, what if I showed you this knife of mine and I started juggling it, but in your direction? I mean, you wouldn't, uh, so. well, Oh, I, I'm no longer afraid of knives. That's just not true. I've conquered my fear because I see there's things more important to be scared of, like Furbuses, Taxes. bananas, <laughs> and global warming. Yeah. The planet's warming up and I say, it's beach time, baby. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, Eric, don't laugh. <laughs> because it's true. That's why he's laughing. <sighs> He's like, boy, oh boy, can we come back from this point of no return? Yeah. <laughs> we got to snow piercer ourselves, baby. But in moderation. Yeah. Just leak a couple stuff up in the sky. Don't be like, hey, guys, this is how much we need. Let's shoot it in there. <laughs> I say this. We get a bunch of like cotton balls and fill the ozone holes with those. Yeah. Have you pitched this to Congress? Not to Congress, but to the guy down the block who's always screaming, God is coming. What did he say? He said, Holy Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. He's but Santa. That's not so the holiday we're talking about. No, it's, it wasn't helpful. It's ho, ho, horror. But you want to know who's not a horror? Sure. Our guess. Yeah. Our guess. Guess who our guest is. Um, you already said my name. <laughs> did I? Oh, yes, I did. It's fucking Scooby-Doo. Ruh, 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 ruh. Oh, we both went into it. <laughs> you know him from Ranger Command Power Hour and many episodes of this show. I'm looking in the screen. I'm so pale white. It's Eric the Trekster, Trekkie B47, Barry. Hey, how's it going? It's going fantastically, sir. How about you? It's it's going. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm all right. It's that spooky time of year, and 
what better way to usher in a spooky season than by watching this damn episode? Man, once again, I read the description of a thing and said this was released on Halloween. It has haunted house in this episode description. It, it must be Halloween. It is not. I apologize. We could have just <laughs> full sale done any episode of Big Bad Beetleborgs and it would have been more horror themed yeah. than this. I think this. they have the house from Big Bad Beetleborgs in this. I think mm -hmm. that's the same set. That's the same exterior. That was like one of the first things I noticed. Exterior. Big bad Beetleborg mansion. Masked <laughs> Rider rolls up, except we don't get that establishing shot of him rolling up. Interior. Huh. I can see why some might think this is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show, guys. It rules. But Eric... We've talked to you many times, but mm -hmm. I've never heard your opinion on one of our favorite genres of movies. It's Halloween season. What type of yeah. horror movies are you into? I'm more of like a psychological horror type of guy. Like, I don't really go for the blood and guts mm -hmm. or like the mass murder stuff. I was never into Jason or Freddy or... You know, any of those guys. Yeah, so I, I just like a good, like, psychological horror movie. I really did like Cabin in the Woods, which was, you know, kind of like that genre-bending mm -hmm. movie. Uh, I, I really like that one. And But yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeking out horror movies exactly. But if there's a good one, you know, I'll, I'll watch it. But for me, it's, it's less about the, like serial killer stuff and, and more of the like mind screw type of thing. You're really into Star Trek and there's so many sure. episodes of that. Are there any horror episodes of Star Trek? Oh, plenty. Yeah, they've they've done some crazy like body horror type episodes. You know, they've done alien invasion type like aliens invading the ship and you don't know who they are. There's a really good one of Enterprise called Silent Enemy. And, you know, this is the prequel series where they're just kind of like getting out there in space. And this huge, powerful ship just like obliterates them in one wave and starts like invading their ship. Oh. And they have to find a way to like repel them. And these aliens, you never see them again in Star Trek. Like they don't even talk. All the power goes down in the ship. So they're like in corridors with lights, pan lights and with their phasers. And yeah, it's a super spooky episode. And yeah, it's it's one of the best. So I appreciate horror elements in, in all the, you know, sci-fi stuff that I watch. So yeah, it's just, I, yeah, like I said, I'm just not a huge fan of <laughs> of the serial killer type stuff. Now, what about episodes of Star Trek that feature ghosts? Well, there was an episode in the seventh season called Sub Rosa, where basically there's a ghost in a candle that fucked Beverly Crusher's grandmother, and then she fucks a ghost, essentially. Eric, did you listen to our discussion of that episode? <laughs> I think I missed that one. I'm so behind. Oh, it's all good. We did it on the Patreon with our friend Mars because oh, he okay. kept saying that that was the, in quotes, worst episode. And Nicole, oh, Nicole and I said, we can't watch Star <laughs> Trek because we know all the other ones aren't like this. <laughs> we loved it. It's actually funny that you brought that up because I've been going through a Next Generation we rewatch with uh, Teresa. And I noticed that this was next on the list. I have avoided us watching Star Trek for weeks because I'm debating <laughs> whether or not to show her this episode. It's good. I just, I just have to buckle down and just power through it and, and let her watch it. Show the mother of your child a horny ghost. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's two thumbs up in my book. Hell yeah. But let's get into the meat of what's Whoa. up. Whoa, you didn't ask me how my day was. Oh, how wow. is your day? Wow. Okay. Oh, and I have news as well. Because I wanted to preface this episode to kind of give a, a warning that uh -oh. I'm extra grumpy today and just wanted to get out like all the really negative notes about this episode just like right up top. Okay. 
which include what the fuck am I even looking at? <laughs> this makes me want to unalive myself. And I hope this bat gives them all rabies. There's also a part where you just said, can I go? I mean, yeah. I loved it. What is your thing? Eric. Yeah. You no longer can go to me to go to Nicole for special comic book needs in case like some fancy Power Ranger stuff comes out. You now need to go to Nicole to go to me because now I work at Chicago Comics and Nicole doesn't. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. What happened? Nicole quit. I got the fuck out of there. And I just, I needed a part-time job and I was like, (laughs) I'll take the job if you need it. And I said, why? And I said, please, I'm loving it there. Yeah, you normally it takes like six months. No. That's fine. If you enjoy it, that's fucking great. I love that for you. The only thing I don't enjoy, they need new soap, hand soap, because this one gives me an allergic reaction. Yeah. Oh. I mean, James is allergic to everything scented, Uh so... Scented oh, okay. candles. It's really frustrating. Scented potatoes. And you went to the doctor and they just gave you normal allergy medicine. Uh-huh. Well, no, they need to send me to a specialist. Okay, well, are they? Yeah, yeah. I just need to make the appointment. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. <laughs> I need to slap that uh, referral on the fridge. Well, slap congrats, congrats to both of you on your new endeavors. Uh-huh. Thanks. Or new slash old endeavors. I'm terrified. What are you talking Perfect about? Perfect <laughs> for the spooky season. <laughs> <laughs> you've been you've been having a great time yeah, as yeah, of yeah. recently. I definitely didn't cry this morning. Yeah, it yeah. Oh, no. It wasn't this morning. It was this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wouldn't get out of bed. Oh, that's what, no. You got out of bed at a decent time. Yeah. At 10 a.m. That's good. Yeah. Comparatively, you used to go to like 11. I mean, in my defense, Henry was being a fucking dick. (laughs) Yeah. And you want to know why you were able to sleep in? Because you woke up. Yeah, I woke up and took care of him. Well, I mean, that's because he's used to you getting up that early. Yeah, but I need to sleep sometimes, Henry. Yeah. Okay. And especially when he's waking me up every single hour, he's now very attached to me. So it's even more aggressive. It's not just, hey, I want someone up to feed me. It's like, hey, I want you up so I can spend time with you. But just cuddle Mm. me in bed. Yeah. We got to get him on a better sleep schedule. (laughs) Whenever we see him during the PM hours, shake him. No. Yes. Pick him up and say, wake up. We got to clockwork orange him. Oh, my God. Uh, Meaning feed him milk. Just give him diarrhea. Yes. And then he's up. He can't go to sleep. Oh, my God. (laughs) Keep him in the tub. That's not good. Oh, Henry becomes tub girl for Gen Z. I hate it. Yeah. It's a tub girl heavy week this week. Can we move on? Of course, Nicole. (laughs) Guys, today we are discussing, I believe, episode 36 of Masked Rider called It's Real Batty or something. Dex has a bat? Dex at bat. Oh, there we go. That's a clever title. They're all no, puns. No, it's not. <laughs> no, this whole... <laughs> the puns in this were horrible. It was very unappealing. Oh, dang. But I don't <laughs> want none if you ain't got puns, hun. No, thanks. Yes, please. So, quick rundown, and then I'll ask Eric his experience with this, and ask Nicole. In this episode, Albie has a friend who has a bat, but also a St. Bernard, but the bat, he's bat-sitting, and uh, we're not talking a Louisville slugger. And then this kid's like, oh, whoops, or no, Furbis let him out of the cage because Furbis can't be caged. And then there's someone stealing bananas to get Explodium. We'll get into that in a little bit. Wowzers. (sighs) This is a first draft, fuckers. (laughs) Just like the show. Yes, that's what I'm saying. The entire show is a first draft. Oh, I thought you were saying your summary is a first draft. This is all off the tip of my dick. So 
they have to take out this dude who's stealing all the bananas because he can turn bananas into keys by just mushing them in there. <laughs> this show rips. And then it's it's improv. That's what this show is. It's conscious of the stream. And then they save the day. The bat grows big because it gets out of its cage. Die Ranger. I would say a child <laughs> wrote this, but I feel like a child would write something better yeah like axe cop. first why the hell are there two bat monsters this could have been the same thing you just do a lord zed where the bat escapes in the first five minutes of the episode yeah and then he's and then king dragon's like oh use my ray ha huh? and then you kill two birds with one you kill two bats with one stone with one banana. <laughs> I mean, only explanation, as James said, it's a first draft and they just went with it. Or there wasn't enough footage from like each episode to pull yeah. into one, but then just have the kids meander a little bit more. That's the best part of this show is those kids just goofing around. <laughs> I haven't watch this show in about 30 years or whenever the hell this came out. Like I haven't watched this show in 27, 26 years, whenever mm -hmm. it came out. Cause they did a crossover episode with the mighty Morphin Rangers to introduce decks in the third season. So that was 95, 96. So mm -hmm. I legit have not watched this in 27 years. I've been watching it once a month and having a blast. <laughs> I don't know how you do it because this show, this episode in particular, I don't even remember this one. I think, you know, I was less concerned about the spinoffs of the Saban at the time. Like, I love Big Bad Beetleborgs. Like, I was all about that show mm -hmm. and I love the Hillhurst monsters and, and everything. But Mass Rider, I, I do remember watching it, but because it never came out on VHS, it never came out on DVD, it, I don't think it ever re-ran anywhere. I only watched those episodes as they came out, so I probably forgot like 98% of this show. Mm -hmm. And this was terrible. <laughs> So I, yeah, because this is a collection of people finding VHS recordings besides maybe the first three episodes mm -hmm. there. So how I am watching this and how I sent you a link, Bereke Subs yeah. took all of what is out there of this and found the best versions of each episode and then like upscaled it, did all this cool shit to it to make it look as good as it can be. So some... Well, he must have missed half of this episode because... <laughs> well, there's... It's just like the best yeah. they can do with what they have. I think three yeah. episodes were officially released on DVD, on like a single DVD release. And oh, then man. there were some bootlegs that people had from like Malaysia or something that... Mm -hmm. So some episodes are these quality. That's why the intro... The theme song yes. looked wildly good, and then it goes... And, like, the first minute of this episode looked good. Like, when Dex is reading the Beatle thing, and mm -hmm. then it just went to... Like, the tracking went... Yeah. But, yeah, it was rough. And while watching it, I think I also enjoy it looking this bad because it feels like someone trying to make yeah. a uncovered... TV show from the 90s that no one ever watched and you know shooting it on cassette That's just Master Rider. <laughs> yeah, it, oh yeah, it is. Uh I just I love this show. It's so stupid in all the greatest ways and I think I'm legit a huge Ted Jan Roberts. TJ Roberts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, he's cool. I got to watch all his movies. I, I had it in my notes that I forgot in the opening. He just makes such a creeper face uh -huh. in his opening. It's just like. <laughs> in the beginning, he at, he is a perfect actor at acting yeah. like an alien thrown into a different culture. He is wildly weird with acting choices, but he was clearly hired for his martial arts acumen because he fucking rips right. at that. But now 
I the most recent episode I've seen is maybe episode four or six of the series. So going mm-hmm. to episode 36, his acting, it's like he hired some old like 1970s sitcom writers to make his <laughs> jokes and he's delivering it like Leno on his worst day. The the thing that killed me is when God, I forget the kids. It's Molly and Albie. Yeah. Yeah. So when Albie first brings the bet and then Molly says something and it's like, oh, something or other. And and Dex says, well, maybe she should take off her sweater. And, and he does it in such a creepy way. I'm like, I had to go back and rewind it to see what the hell yeah. they said for him to make that comment. He goes, then perhaps she should take off her sweater. <laughs> if she's too warm. Uh huh. Oh, that's right. Because it's like, oh, you're getting, oh, you're you're warm or whatever. And he didn't get the reference. And, and I get it because, you know, he's not from Earth. But wow. I, it was just the way he like, it was, he wasn't looking at the camera, but it was kind of like off to the side. Well, maybe she should take off her sweater. And it was just <laughs> <laughs> so I can see your like Leno analogy, like really bad sitcom delivery. Because, yeah, I was like, why? He's got such a creepy face. Mm-hmm. Actually, I won't say Leno on his worst day. Leno in dress rehearsal, just like getting the jokes down yeah. just to like, I know the words to this, but not I, I'll give my Leno delivery when we're actually filming. But Nicole, this yeah. is your first time watching this. Thoughts? <laughs> so let me reiterate, what the fuck am I even looking at? <laughs> Mass this Rider. makes me want to unalive myself. Furbis. And I hope this family gets rabies. A bat monster. Yeah. Well, if you're feeling a little on edge, then perhaps you should remove your sweater. (laughs) So stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's get into this. Wow. It starts out with the family in the kitchen as they usually are and everyone's saying, where's Albie? And Dex says, oh, yeah, I'm surprised he's not here. It's... Not usual, or someone else might say this. It's not usual for him to miss triple chocolate fudge brownies, just like a 90s kid. And he's pet sitting for a friend. And the daughter asks, oh, I hope it's not the St. Bernard again, which is weird because the dad is famously allergic to pets, which is, uh, Furbis is a big issue for him. He's constantly sneezing unless... Uh, Maybe from episode four to 36, he takes some miracle drug or maybe he gets injected. He didn't sneeze once in this episode. Yeah. So maybe he got injected with Spider X. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh Uh-huh. Now he's Spider-Man. Or, you know, maybe he just like smashed like very violently a banana onto his skin. (laughs) (laughs) And he unlocked... The powers of the mind. That's how. Yeah. When I when I so dumb. (laughs) When (laughs) he just like shoved it up his nose. (laughs) When I got the lament configuration, I just grabbed a banana and just mushed it in there, and that unlocked the box to pleasures. And then the Cenobites came rolling up and said, "Wow, you have defiled our sacred box." We're not going to take you. And I said, but I want to be whipped and chained. Yeah. I want chains to pull on my flesh so hard that I explode. Like Explodium. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Guys, so the main bad guy is going into- Is a bat. Yeah. Is he a bat? Yes, because he's got the bat like- And he he eats bananas like a bat. Oh, yeah. He's got like the hand- the. The wings on his ha- head. I think that was their, like, indirect explanation. <laughs> like, okay. oh, this bat eats bananas. So that means all bats eat bananas. Therefore, this monster one does. I just thought he was more my future husband. <laughs> I don't know, man. Because Grandpa's Maybe a Dracula. You didn't have enough bananas. It, it, he did... He did mush a banana on my hole and it unlocked my my G spot. Oh my god. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> it's the best. It's, it's the because bananas hurt my tummy. The best way for yeah. me to consume them is like kid, Which like hole. It, oh, <laughs> the Did hole. Did you sound it? No, God, no. I'm not a monster. <laughs> I cut it in little pieces and then shoved it inside my other hole. And I had a blast because bananas hurt my tummy. Proud partner of the tokusatsu that way. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> Are we bringing that, that bit still back? A thing? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we forgot about it for a while. Yeah, we forgot the bit. I want to try to bring it back. So, whenever we say a vile <laughs> thing, we say until they tell us to stop. Yeah. But yeah. I can now get potassium through my hole like club kids did in New York City by putting suppository ecstasy. So, oh, yeah. hey, how about that explodium? <laughs> okay, so explodium is this. It's Does a mineral. It explode. It's gold mixed with, you guessed it, explosives. But they call it like a rare mineral. Yeah. Explodium? That's the, like the stupidest. Thing. Okay, but unobtainium. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like a child could have wrote a better script. Okay, do you think Avatar is good? The blue guys. Which? Yeah. Okay, unobtainium. It's a thing that's hard to obtain. Yeah. That's exactly what explodium is. No. Explodium no. is when I, but, uh, after I <laughs> do my banana diet. I think they called it that because they wanted this threat of like an explosion. But I think in the original, like, I've never seen the original uh, mass writer that this is based off the, mm -hmm. the common art. This, I do have it. On, I have both series. It's Common Rider Black and Black RX. Black RX is the basis for Mass Rider, and both of them are available on DVD, like the original Japanese. So I, I really want to find the episode that this is based off of because I really think that this guy was just stealing gold, like because they're just gold bars. Mm -hmm. And so they say Explodium, and then when he finally opens the vault, he's like, ah, yes, the Explodium Gold. And I'm like, oh, no, you're just stealing gold. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's bad. He rips off the mask. Guess who it is? Austin Powers' worst enemy. Gold member. Because mm. he loves gold. Mm -hmm. do, you think, do you think gold member would like gold that explodes? Yeah. Whoa. I think it'd be the only gold that he uses in his heist is okay. exploding gold. Yeah, but I love Nicole. I wouldn't love a Nicole who explodes. That's not that's not the same. <laughs> yes, it is. Because what you owe, oh, you hear if you love it, release it, you know? You know that saying? You don't hear if you love it, you're okay with it exploding. <laughs> exactly, Nicole. Take that one but, for but the, the team. But real, the real key is the banana. Yes, it is. So all of a sudden, this dude, what's his name? Banana Man? No, sure. it's Banantics. Okay, Banantics, because he's got all these antics going on. He is here to steal this, and he shows up in the security camera, and these two security guards say, Oh, my God. <laughs> This has got to be a joke. Yeah, guys, security guards, as it says in their description, uh, just assume everything's a joke. Not, okay, real quick, Stitches of Mental Ward and KYP RIP, he worked at the Ford Motor Museum, I think is what it is, and that place is haunted, which sucks because if you hear a noise— as a security guard, mm -hmm. he had to go to that noise to make sure it wasn't a burglar. So sometimes you might see a ghost. You have to literally run towards ghosts in that place. These security guards suck. I mean, just because you have to doesn't mean they're going to. No, you gots to. I guess we've actually seen that a I lot in, uh, you know, uh -oh. active shooter shit. Yeah. I actually wrote in my notes that these are probably the worst security guards ever. And mm -hmm. I don't just mean in fiction, but I mean in real life, the actors, these guys, they like pulled two guys off the street and said, hey, be security guards, because this was terrible. And this is like in the first... 
two minutes. And I was like, okay, this is setting the scene. <laughs> well, one of these security guards, a young Daniel Day Lewis. No. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> so then this bat says, ooh, I can get into anything with my banana and pulls out a normal <laughs> banana, unpeels it, and then just mushes it in. Just I've seen it in. I've seen this shit in other shows and it like, why do you think this would work? But this is kid logic of, okay, well, if I just mush something in there, then I can harden it with magic. It will become a perfect key and be able to unlock it. That's kid logic. So I'm okay with this. That's fine. I'm not arguing with the logic of it. Yeah, I just assumed, you know, it's his monster powers or whatever. He's just like, ooh, I, he's like, I always need a banana. <laughs> it, it's crazy how it's a real it's banana. It's just fucking yeah. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I think because it's a real banana, that makes it more stupid. He should have pulled out a prop banana. But they treat the real bananas like prop bananas because he's throwing these bananas like ninja stars oh, yeah. and they explode, which was actually kind of funny. I, I, I like that. But the key thing was ridiculous. He just goes, ooh, I never leave home without a banana. <laughs> What else could, like, what are things that, like... Your dick. No. And what? <laughs> no, I was going to say he could use bananas for clogging holes. Oh, my God, guys. Did we already say this? Smush a banana in the ozone. Make it harden. God damn it. No more global You're warming. You're genius. Thank you. I was rejected thrice from Mensa. <laughs> I wonder why. No. <laughs> I said, guys, I got this banana trick that will <laughs> save everything. And somehow Dex can talk with bats. Okay. Well, we're. Oh, sorry. We're, we're almost like, there power. because okay. we're back. Back to the family. Please tell me we're not going to do a beat by beat of this. Yeah, almost, I'm like, this is going to take for It's not going to. Ever. Uh, we're just going note by note of my note, not beat by beat. Beat okay. by beat. I don't know. Uh, his powers are truly magic. Oh. Okay. <laughs> They're there hanging out with a family and the sister's like, ew, gross. I wish Patsy were here. And Dex says, I think it's a handsome creature. And his delivery has changed so much. He seems like just an absolute creep. <laughs> he is. I'm telling you, that intro says it all. When he looks at the camera, he's just like, mm. it's just, it's bad. But also, like, Molly can kick rocks because bats are fucking cute. She was horrible. I don't know if she's this horrible in the entire show. Uh -huh. I don't remember. She's real cool. But she got so bored of the bat. She's like, oh, I don't want anything to do with bats. And then, you know, the dad's, you know, very clearly explaining, oh, bats have this uh, super sensitive hearing and that's how they're able to hear. <laughs> you know, we get Bat 101 and she just turns on this like shitty rock music that's basically a recycle of Ron Wasserman's Power Rangers stuff because they use it later in the mm -hmm. episode. I wrote down that's that Mighty Morphin guitar tone. Oh, it is. But it is. this is also some Karen Foster shit. Like, I could see in Step by Step Karen Foster doing something like this of, hey, just make sure you're very quiet. Frank is sleeping. He got speared in the head at the construction Whoa. site. And then she goes, okay, yeah, goes into the to the living room, and then you just hear the TV blasting. I disagree, but sure. Okay, all right. Nicole stands Karen Foster. We both do. She's the coolest. Th that's a compliment. I think she would do something like this, especially maybe like season four, season five, Karen. I mean, no, like it's something JT would do. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, also Cody would do something. He would be like, oh, yeah. And then start playing guitar. And he's like, wait, you guys can hear that, too. And another like, another 90 show that I haven't watched in about 25 years. <laughs> we watched it last night. <laughs> we watch it a lot. So after like hearing the like, eep, 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 the bat's freaking out and Dex goes, uh, he says that 
it's more than oh. just the sound. He wants to be set free from this cage. And the dad goes, Dex, do you speak bad? And then Dex goes, apparently I do. And this is when Nicole said, can I go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our relationship was tested. Oh. It, yeah. And I, I can passed. believe it. I, I wouldn't expose anyone to this show intentionally. <laughs> no, guys, it's show rules. We need See, a- I, I have I'm clouded by nostalgia. I have a Furbus <laughs> figure over there. D- does, has Nicole seen the Furbus figure? No. I specifically bought this on eBay because it's been a running joke in the Twitter tokusatsu fandom that there's like an all hail Furbus. And this has been going on for years. Look at this little dude. Hell yeah. It's walking Furbus. Wow. His little mouth open so he can go like, hey, how's it going? Money go oh, well. Furbus. Oh, Oh, Nicole. It has a wig for a tail. Okay. Nicole. This wig? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, James. What were you saying? Oh. I thought when Eric said, my mind is clouded by nostalgia, but James, what's your excuse? Uh. <laughs> It's just, I legitimately love this show. I wish we got a 4K transfer on Blu-ray of every episode. I do actually wish for Mass Rider to be on physical media, like a licensed thing. If they can release teenage alien tattoo fighters from Beverly Hills on DVD, this show should be on DVD. Mm -hmm. Because right now it's lost media. Yeah. They put Big Bad Beetleborgs, they put Power Rangers, they put VR Troopers. The only Saban shows that are missing are The Knights of Tiernanog and Mass Rider. I would buy this. I would ask Z, hey, can I get some more hours this week because I need to buy a TV show. Hot take, it should stay lost. No! (laughs) (laughs) I, after watching this episode, I kind of reversed uh-uh. my position. Uh-uh. I, imagine getting stoned and watching this. Man, life would be perfect. I'm a man of not many means. So, we hear that the Explodium has been exploded or stolen, I mean. Dex goes... Oh, I need to go look into this. This is what I need to do. And the mom says, Oh, shouldn't the police handle this? Yes. And then he (laughs) says, My mission is to protect the people of Earth. The police can't help with these matters. We should be calling, however, animal control because they're all these bats. Yeah. I mean, police don't fucking help with anything. So he's not wrong. But animal control, they'll choke a dog. They don't give a shit. They'll choke a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll pet a cat. Henry? Yes, it's like you. Henry's here. Hi. They find out that all the bananas in the place, in the entire, the specific kind of bananas, have been bought from the creepy man at the Jenkum place, a.k.a. doing... Big Bad Beetleborgs. Also, a.k.a. Jenkum, which is uh, inhaling... Dog shit or something? No, it's Jenkins. High? It was the Jenkins place. What are you? Yeah, but Jenkum <laughs> is a, is some weird drug shit, literal shit. But this was Jenkins. <laughs> James, James, What's up? did your siblings <laughs> prank you? No, to tell you no that inhaling dog shit fumes will get you high. <laughs> No, they said, hey, look at this doll. It's going to kill you. And I said, no, Miss Beasley. Then Miss Beasley (laughs) told me to inhale some dog shit. (laughs) Hold on. (laughs) Jenkum is an inhalant and hallucinogen created from fermented human waste. In the mid-1990s, it was reported to be a popular street drug among Zimbabwean youth. Furbel says don't do drugs. Um, uh, Well, unless it's human fecal matter, you know? They would reportedly put the feces and urine in a jar or a bucket and seal it with a balloon or a lid, respectively. So, yeah, guys, and then it would ferment in the sun and then, oh, baby. Oh, 
that's uh, yeah, it's still better nasty. than this episode. Also, what? it's a hoax. <laughs> you can't really get high on this. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? Again, thrice rejected from Mensa. Oh, no. So they're saying this place, the the J- Jenkins, Jenkins. <laughs> the Jenkins, not the Jenkum, <laughs> the Jenkin place is haunted. There's ghosts. And Dex goes, you silly man, Alby, there's no such thing as ghosts. Bitch, you're an alien and there are monsters. There could be ghosts. It's true. Yeah, I was like, how do you how do you know? You just got here. He says, because I've taken many lives and I see the afterlife whenever I see the <laughs> life drain from these monsters' eyes. There is nothing after this. Stop leaving these around for her to eat. I don't on purpose. Or on porpoise. She's talking about a twist tie. Uh. Yeah, Butter likes to try and eat them. So... He goes into the Jenkin place and he says, as I've said before, I can see why some might think this house is haunted. And then this old man comes out and he's like, oh, hey, get out of here. And he's like, oh, did Dragon send you not tell you that I'm coming? And he's like, oh, Dragon, wait. Oh, no, I've been found out. And then they fight or something. But back at the house. Okay. I will say. That was a cool transformation from mm-hmm. the old guy to the thing. Because I don't know what happened, but, like, is the face, like, pops out. Uh, it's like the monster face was made of hollow plastic, and it just went bleh. And I thought it was kind of cool. I did, too. Like I said, I thought all this episode was cool. <laughs> so, back at the house, Furbis sees this bat in a cage, And he's like, oh, hell yeah. You know me. I love three things. Chaos, guano, and spreading rabies. Because he just goes and unlocks the cage and he's like, yeah. (laughs) I loved it. Because this is a chaos scene. It's just everyone freaking out, running around as Furbis is elated by it. I want to know who the hell left the window open. (laughs) <laughs> I, it's a summer day. It's just California. It's probably <laughs> Furbis. Oh, yeah, Furbis. Oh, they might need the windows always open because of the allergies. Oh, maybe. But no, Furbis was like a little shit in this mm-hmm. episode. I know he's always a little shit, but like he was just like not giving a crap. And I thought, so in the beginning, if I'm not mistaken, in the beginning of the show, weren't they hiding Furbis from the parents? Yes, but in episode four, they're just like, hey, here's Furbis. We got to show you, Dad. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. They might also need the windows open because Furbis is actively cultivating Jankum oh, within the on. walls. Because <laughs> he lives in the walls. He's like um, Dirty oh. Ronnie. What? What's that name? Lonely Ronnie? There's a scary movie about a kid living in the walls. Okay. Bad Ronald. And then we get the line, for a top banana, you should be more appealing. (laughs) It's so stupid. There's so many dumb banana jokes in this. For a top banana, you should have more tarantula eggs. Ew. Did you know the little black bits at the bottom of bananas are tarantula eggs? Bananas. It's not really. I just don't eat them. <laughs> That's a mighty boosh reference. So then as they're trying to catch this bat, what's his nuts? The dad is using a, a net and Nicole <laughs> hated this part, which was he goes to swing down. Then it cuts to another scene, then cuts back to him. And the net has a pillow inside of it. And No, she's- no, 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 no. It doesn't have a pillow inside of it. It looks as if. The actor, like, picked up a pillow and then put it up, like, held it up against the opening of the net and was like, oh, and then, like, draw, like, okay. set the pillow down <laughs> as if he, like, caught a pillow in the air. Like, wait, what? What do you mean? This doesn't make any fucking sense. Catching pillow is slang for ending up in a pegging relationship. <laughs> Oh, no. It's like catching feelings, but you're like, oh, no, I'm face down on a pillow. Thank you for that. 
And at this time, Nicole's like, I could be watching Chunky right now. And I said, Chunky is hunky, but Masked Rider is taken to task Pfizer. Yes, guys. Furbis is, he's not anti-vax. He is vax cautious. You know, he, he's questioning it. How did they come up with something so quick, you know? Anyways, Count Dragon is like spying on the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just has a spy cam. He's like, ah, oh, we'll have to see what they're up to and we'll distract them. And uses his grow beam ray, whatever. It's, it's so Power Rangers. And turns Fluffy, which is the bat's name, into another bat monster. Yeah. I, I just don't see why they couldn't just have connected the A and B plots together. Like, it was just so crazy that there's two bat monsters in this episode. That's why I'm like, as soon as that happened, I'm like, why didn't this just, all this setup just happen in the beginning? Yeah. But yeah. First draft. <laughs> If e Even if R2 Shelby 2 and I were writing this on formulaic, I would have sitcom styled been like the A plot and the B plot need to sync up. It could be that like they didn't have fighting footage yeah. with yeah. the first monster. Like I said before, I feel like the first monster because he's literally stealing cartoon gold bricks and then they, they switch to explodium gold. Yeah. Like I really feel that the original uh, footage had to have been like, this guy is just stealing bank vaults and they didn't have enough to connect it to the other thing. But even in, you know, the common writer black RX that there's still two bat themed monsters at some point, like you typically don't see that in Sentai or Tokusatsu. Like they usually don't, I mean, sometimes the monsters have themes, but usually you don't have, like, two of the same type. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I was like, whoa, two bat monsters. And it's crazy because when they're fighting, when he's trying to destroy Fluffy or, like, contain Fluffy, like, they're like, oh, no, there's, there, he's attacking those people. And it's just, like, blatant Japanese people from the original mm. Kamen Rider. <laughs> And I think, I think the, like one of the main characters from the show, because there's this one shot of like a guy helping another guy up mm -hmm. and it's such a like focus shot. You're like, wait, is that actually like main character type people from the original footage? So yeah, it was, it was nuts. It was definitely uh cut together really badly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this comes from the two episodes, Mystery, A Dream of Swimming in the Air. That is the fluffy fight footage. And then okay. the Bananax footage is from the banana eating ogre, which means the bananas might also be in that. Okay. Yeah. Which means he's not a bat. He's an ogre. An ogre. Which, Which does not make sense. But it's still crazy because he's got like those bad ears. It's yeah. very, very weird. I'll say they picked they picked a good monster to like represent bats if that's what they were going for. Mm -hmm. Nicole loves Chunky now, aka the TV series Chucky. That was my next note. My next note is Eric, explain yeah. Super Blue. Okay, so in Black RX and basically in other common writers, they always get like power up forms. And I believe in Black RX, he had like three mm. different forms because I know there's Booster Gold, or that's what they don't they call it that in Master Rider? I might not have gotten to those episodes. It's been so long. But yeah, so he has different like forms for for power ups essentially. Okay, and blue's one of them, gold's one of them, and black's one of them. Is his gold version is that explodium? <laughs> it might as well be at this point. <laughs> All right, someone who hits him too hard, he just explodes. Yeah, I hate that they use the same three sound effects. Yeah, <laughs> huh. yeah, <Bzzz>. yeah. <laughs> Hey, they, they got it on a sampler, just an old school Akai MPC, just going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally. Yeah, it's very possible. Oh my God. Do you want to know what? So there's a hip hop sampling technique 
called the like 16 horns, I think is the technique. So on this 16 padded sampler, you could assign one sample to all 16, but it's at different velocity. So as you Mm -hmm. go down Mm -hmm. each one, it's quieter and quieter. I would love someone to make a boom bap beat, but instead of the horns, it's TJ, what's his name? Uh, Roberts. uh, TJ Roberts. yeah. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like if you've heard an uh, like a '90s boom bap beat, you know that horn technique that it like it's the same horn hit, but it gets quieter and quieter. Just please, someone do that. I guess I could do that, and um, I need to do that. I'll be a god. <laughs> wow. So one of one of the features of this episode is that, as established in the first few minutes, that the bats hate music Mm -hmm. and so albie tells his dad can you make a portable cd player and i'm like didn't they have those in the yeah probably because i forgot was his wasn't his dad an inventor yes i believe so and i'm just like but they had i thought they had portable cd players also what he makes is a boom box boom box yeah Yeah. that's it that's it uh but I, I do want to note because the common writer wiki notes that this was, in fact, the song Ride the Machine from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you got that crossover magic right Hell there. Hell yeah. Wow. It's like in Critters, how there's clearly the uh, stu- Have you seen the movie Critters? Uh, yes. So yes, I have. In that movie, it's, let's say it's by. Sun Coast Films. The, all of a sudden you see, they're like, oh man, I love this music video. And it's a music video and it shows the band, the album title, then the record label is Sun Coast Records. So it's clearly the film production company also mm-hmm. owns a record label. And they're like, we, we need to make the budget back on this. Let's put one of our music videos in that so we can sell those records. Maybe. And that's what right. this feels like. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Do you want to hear the the original premise for the mystery, a dream swimming in the air where the fluffy footage comes from? Yes, please. The synopsis for this Common Rider episode. Kotaro takes on Ghidorin's crisis monster, mutating kids while giving them the delusion that they're flying squirrels. Whoa. <laughs> what? That's so much better. It is. Now, do you want to hear the synopsis for the other episode? Yes. Yet to be added. <laughs> <laughs> no one's put it in the wikia yet. Man. I prefer that. No, Nicole. So in this final <laughs> battle with the uh, the ogre, we'll call him, Banantix. Banantix. Banantix goes like, now eat fruit. And I <laughs> I go, now eat fruit, you cum hauser. Why? I don't know. Because it's like he's <laughs> calling him I a fruit. Because I broke down laughing. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm... I felt delirious at this point. That's what this show does to you, dude. No. Yes, and that's what you need to you need to lean into it. No. Yes. And then finally they win. LB informs us that the bat has been set free back in wherever he's from. And then they say, Hey Dex, have you ever thought about letting Furbis run free and he's like no I'm pretty sure him sitting on the couch playing video games is just what he wants and he's wired he's going crazy <laughs> he just huffed a big old huff of jankum and he's it. playing Sega <laughs> Saturn or Dreamcast or Genesis but I completely forgot when Dex brought out Chopper I totally forgot that his vehicles could talk. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the the car has a sexy woman's voice. We don't see yes. her this episode. Nicole, no, you would have lost not. it. <laughs> I uh, What do you mean? I already did. <laughs> I did, already lose, did it. lose it. No, I think you would have ascended to deitus at that point. <laughs> 
I guess we'll never know. Oh, until next time. (laughs) (laughs) It's a regular show now, guys. Screw Spider-Man. Wait a minute. What's up? I just, uh, this Common Rare Wiki is full of amazing facts. Do you know who voices Combat Chopper, the bike? Richard Kind. What? No. It's not. It's Jason Narvey. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. I completely did not know that. That's what we'd have him on the show to discuss. <laughs> yeah. We say, T- tell us about this masked rider. So, okay, so it is known, but not who did it, a history of Austin stories that MTV show has explained. You can buy Austin stories on DVD because someone stole the master tapes. Because they were Mm. probably thinking, this will never be seen again if I don't do this. And then they brought it to someone to digitize it in order to put Mm -hmm. it out on, like, high-quality DVDs. Someone somewhere, maybe you're an intern, maybe you, you don't like what's going on at Saban, or maybe you just want film preservation. Someone somewhere, like with WMAC Masters, which happened maybe three years ago, someone uploaded all of those episodes in beautiful quality, clearly because someone probably worked on the production team, had the master tapes and said, no one's doing anything with this. I want this to be preserved. I worked so hard on this show. Please, if anyone is listening and you know for a fact because Toei does not want Mast Rider out there, that seems to be the consensus. I will release yeah. a bat into your house. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, a bat man. Until it gives you we rabies. We will bring Robert Pattinson to your front door and you can do whatever you want for one minute. Take a quick selfie with him. Do, do not. Do a TikTok. Give him some jankum. <laughs> yes, hell yeah. Get some guano from him. He squats down and he says, okay, I'll try. <laughs> guano is bat feces. Make some jankum out of that, guys. And that's been our episode. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> Can you title this episode the Jankum Podcast? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Do you get it? Like the the jank? Oh, the Jank Ass Podcast. Yeah. You know, the Jank Ass Crew. Yeah. Check them out on uh, Twitch. Listen to yeah. Mega Man Dies at the end. Or go back and listen to the episode they were on of this show. Watch Sonic for Hire Season 9. They're all <laughs> in it, I think. There you guys have it. I truly enjoy this show. I hope someone releases it. And Eric, thank you so yes. much for coming back on. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's always a good time. I'm... Sorry I've been so crazy busy raising a kid and doing all that stuff. So Yeah, wow. Yeah. Way to be a present and loving father <laughs> to your child. Wow. Come on, no, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on, dude. No, I, I, I love you guys and I wish I had more time to, to be on the podcast more and but yeah, Master Rider, wow. This this did not age well at all. <laughs> I got, it only didn't age well because it's on magnetic tape and it deteriorates. That's what didn't age well. At the same time, I'm going to need you to give me all of the episodes. I will send you a link to download every yes. episode. Yes. Eric, people have been wondering. Yes. You don't You don't have a lot of time, but when will you make the time to play through a lot of Power Rangers video games? <laughs> So we can do that episode of Ranger Command Power Hour. I know. Um, Look, Power Rangers is over. I mean, Cosmic Fury aired. It's the 30th anniversary. It went out like a wet banana. Hasbro doesn't give a crap. So, yes, I now I have the time somehow. And I will play that and we will get you on because I do want to talk about Power Rangers video games because... We know all of them now. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's going to ever be another one. So, yeah, like, let's do it. Hell yeah, brothers. Do you have anything to plug? Uh, Yeah. Uh, Listen to Ranger Command Power Hour at rangercommand.com. You can check out all the links to the show at link tr.ee slash ranger command ph i've got a new kind of subsection of the podcast coming out for the back half of this year 
um, called Rangers Around the World. Uh, we're going to be talking with Power Ranger fans internationally about uh, looking back at the 30, 30 years of Power Rangers, but how Power Rangers affected their country or, you know, because Power Rangers is a global franchise and I feel like all we hear about are, you know, fans from America. And so Power Rangers aired in all these different countries and people had many different experiences with Power Rangers. So I would love if there were any, um, like, Japanese listeners of Mostly Speaking Sentai. We've got a German listener. Yeah. So, yeah, we do have we have some people from Germany, England, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Brazil. So we're just widening the search uh, for, you know, international fandom members and basically going to record some episodes and release that. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm pretty much considering it like a 30 year retrospective of uh, of Power Rangers, but through uh, international fans eyes. So we're going to talk a, a lot about different subjects from different countries, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Hell yeah. I know you're going for international, but if you're down for intergalactic, I know someone from Edenoy who might want to be on the pod. Oh, yeah. And I've got a bushel of bananas ready. Oh, yeah. It's Furbus <laughs> I'm talking about, so you better have some jankum oh, ready. Furbus. <laughs> Nicole, you got anything to plug? <laughs> no, I just... No. Head over to darlinghomebody.com, <laughs> sign up for the sticker stuff, buy a lot of stuff, and oh, there- and then patreon.com slash ranger command ph. There you go, baby. Yes. And gotta make that money. <laughs> the Darling Homebody Shopping Network will be coming back probably Woo! late November or early December. We're excited. We will make a thousand dollars in one night. We were very close last year, maybe seventy dollars short. We'll be doing it. I'll be housing hot sauce and having a good time. Yeah. Maybe if I get my shit together, we can time that episode to release before. (laughs) I just got to play a lot of Power Ranger video games. So many of them. And I'll edit the episode. Thank God. (laughs) Just bleep the swears. (laughs) Uh, It's who, boy. You know me. Uh, Hey, guys. uh, Eric knows I'm not good at bleeping all the curse words because sometimes. Yeah, that's just giving you shit. There there was one time where you're like, wait, you bleeped. I think it was like piss. And I'm like, this is a curse word. What are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, but you didn't bleep a shit. And I was like, "Okay, so one fecal matter is bad, but piss isn't from the pee pee hole. But guys, head over to MLMPod.com to find out information about my other podcasts, such as the Marshland Media Podcast. Just search that. That's where Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling, Shuffling the Deck, and the mini series that Jose and I are doing called Death to Squids, where we are discussing all the Trancer movies, where the hook is, I, I love those movies, but... Jose's feeding me edibles before recordings, and I am <laughs> rip roaring high. It's it's a problem, but very <laughs> funny. So please check that out. Check out Formulaic, Height of Horror, Sweet Child of Time. Just got done with season two of Wheel of Time on that podcast. Oh man, that's a great show. And listen to my music under Marshland Monster. Just released Anal Dentata. Go listen to that wherever music is found. Have a new EP of just drum and bass, like very happy, nice stuff coming out. It's instrumental. It's the best composition that I've ever done. And head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. This week is the citizens of Townsville Z, where we're discussing Powerpuff Girls Z episode three with R2 Shelby, two of the ROM complex and formulaic. It's a great time, baby. And $10 $10 patrons get all of that, plus monthly bonus content in the form of straight to Patreon or a watch along, depending on the month, and shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those, starting with Steve F., our guest today, Eric Berry of Ranger Command Hello. Power Hour, Alex Z, the Waz, Orion, he remixed an Anal Dentata track. 
Jordan B, the KS, which my Bickle brother and common law, Joshua Jake, is who's going to be a best man this weekend. Actually, we're, we're unsure. I'm assuming he's the best man in that wedding, but Nicole, I guess, hasn't been confirmed to that. Wait, no, he put on the bachelor party, and that's a duty so, of a best man. So I did Liz's. Oh, you weren't a best man? I was a bridesmaid, but I wasn't the maid of honor. Okay, well, I still... Who else would be... Ben, ben doesn't have friends. I don't... Why does this matter well, so much I to want. You? I wouldn't mind being who a best man cares? someday. Steve Barnes, a sweet child of time, also remixed Anal Dentata, the womb in which I emerged my mother. Lil Corey's BFF and now former roommate Shane, that fed. Twitch.tv forward slash core winning. It's Corwin and from the ROM complex and formulaic, a podcast in script writing. It's R2 Shelby 2. Twitch.tv forward slash R2 Shelby 2. And I've been James. I'm Nicole. And I'm Eric. And we've been mostly, mostly speaking sentai. Uh, we were all somehow off on that, I feel like. Okay. Do you want to redo row. it? No. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Furbus. Dang, you do a good Furbus. This has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit MLMPod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to Patreon.com forward slash MLMPod and sign up today. Hello? Okay. I thought I heard knocking. Wee. Sorry. Ooh, it's spooky. <laughs> oh, no. Furbles. Oh, yeah.